Welcome guys. So today we are talking about MRCP paces and a particular element of it, which is actually a very important tool that you can utilize. And if used right, it can be a real asset, the crib sheet. Okay, so we're going to be talking about that today. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Dr. Vishal Kumar. I am a doctor in the UK and I have created the YouTube channel and also keenmedic.com where you can find uh, my course as well as my book. So let's get started. So today in this video, what we're going to be talking about is the crib sheet. So what is it? Of course, for those of you who haven't done paces yet, uh, you may not have come across it. It is basically a simple sheet of paper, okay? A4 paper, plain paper. And it is um, kept outside the station, available for you, so that you can jot down your thoughts, your notes on whatever you want. Um, and it is <laughs> with stations where you are talking, okay? So basically, history, and communication and uh, it would also be in station five all right so in stations two four and five as of now of course in paces 2020 and beyond that would change but as of now this is what it is now it can be a real tool it, it is one of those things that um, you know I consider personally to be a gift that they have given you okay because not all postgraduate exams have this kind of thing and but the paces does so the other gift that i believe in is the five minute break that you get uh, after each station in between each, um, each station okay so those two are i think tools that really allow you to uh, maximize on paces all right so we're going to be talking about the crib sheet which is one of those tools how to use it so stations two and five i've grouped them together because in station two as of now it's history taking and station five will have of course everything including history taking and exam Okay, so this is how I would propose that you use it. So I'm going to talk you through an example so that you can see how uh, you should be using it. All right. Let's imagine a scenario. A 45-year-old man with shortness of breath, with no past medical history. So how would you use it? Think about it. So you've got a plain sheet of paper and you need to use it and write things down in a certain way that will allow you to then maximize on all the information that you can acquire and make a logical diagnosis, differential diagnosis um, that you can explain to the patient and justify to your examiners. So this is what I propose. So this is the gist of the information, okay? So 45 year old main with shortness of breath and these would be some of your differentials. Feel free to read through all of them. And this is the sheet of paper. So about two thirds of the way into the sheet of paper around here, I would suggest that you draw a straight line down. And the first thing that you should write down uh, is their name and their age, uh, along with their presenting complaint, which is shortness of breath, okay, SOB. The reason why I would suggest you write down the name is because uh, you need to focus on everything else, okay? You don't have the luxury to be remembering their name, but it is a very nice thing, a very nice touch for you to know their name at the end when you're summarizing back to them, explaining to them, uh, and also talking to your examiners because that shows that you're obviously listening, paying attention, you care about the patient, okay? And that all of that will uh, contribute to earning you the marks. All right, so this is, these are the first things that you should write. The other bits, the immediately after that, that I think you should be going for is the differential diagnosis, DD. And uh, on each line, on uh, each separate line, you should be writing down each different differential diagnosis, okay? And followed by, lastly, all the other specific points that you might want to check. So the duration, onset, pain, palpitations, all of it associated with, um, risk factors and symptoms okay these are the things that you should write down last the reason why i have chosen this particular order is because 
you should write down the differential diagnosis second because if you run out of time and you need to enter the station at least you will have written the differential diagnosis down and then every time you glance at your sheet and during the station which you again are allowed to do you're allowed to take the paper in and you're allowed to glance at your sheet every now and then that is okay then you can see what um, diagnosis you need to be looking out for what you have uh, ruled out things like that okay uh, and then of course you if you want to look at specific things these will be here as well station four is communication yeah so you won't need to examine the patient so in here i would suggest uh, you use a slightly different um, approach to this in terms of communication, breaking bad news is one of the stations that can come up. So, so again, patient's name and their demographics, 45-year-old uh, male with their uh, diagnosis, which should be provided to you at the start of the station, okay, in the uh, vignette, the scenario information. So that should go right at the top so that uh, it guides you and keeps you on track. And then after that, in line, I, I would suggest the kind of order that you would follow, okay, uh, in the station itself. So checking their understanding, their eyes, the ideas, concerns, and expectations, offering uh, to call their relatives or friends or even nurses in, in your own ward, giving them a warning shot of the bad news that is about to come, giving the news, allowing some silence, pausing, allowing them to express their feelings, concerns, um, their emotions, showing empathy, um, offering support, again, icing again, which is ideas, concerns, expectations. Remember how it, uh, see how it features twice, and then explaining the next steps, the plan, and uh, checking their understanding, allowing them to ask questions, things like that, okay? So I would write down the order itself, because you don't have a differential diagnosis, right? So instead, what you should write down are the key features in the order that you would uh, follow in the station so that you don't miss these features these points out during the station okay in station four which is communication and this is why i think you should use it so paces is actually a very high pressure environment as you can imagine so i would say yeah it is even higher than you know uh when you are on call if if you're on call at least you know that it is not an exam right uh, which your entire career depends on but it paces basically is that's essentially what it is and you need to be keeping to a certain number of minutes and be able to relay all the information get all the information and explain everything right so it is very easy for you to forget things and uh, not touch on things even though you may have thought of them at the start of the station which is why the crib sheet will allow you to organize your thoughts and allow you to not miss crucial elements that will cost you the station basically and which means that if you can do the first three things then you will then be able to show empathy rather than be confused or or spend precious seconds and minutes thinking about what you do, what you should be doing next all right and therefore lastly it will help you in presenting because you will have all the information from the uh, crib sheet and uh, then you will be able to summarize to the patient and answer the questions that the examiners then present to you at the end of the station so I hope that you found useful, guys. If you want to learn more effective strategies for PACES, then you should definitely check out my book on Amazon and also PACES course online with all its features uh, on keenmedic.com. Both will be linked down below. I will see you in the next video.